So let me ask you something. If the year was 1995, Sonic and Knuckles has just released and made Sonic 3 a complete and full experience and signaled the end of a trilogy of games kicked and sculpted by 90s culture. But this is the 90s and trilogies aren't cool anymore, and even Star Wars is getting a sequel these days, 15 years after the original trilogy. So you sit, waiting for the fourth game in the Sonic series with a smile on your face and speed in your heart. But six months go by and nothing happens. Soon months turn into years, and Sonic has still been around. He's made a move into 3D platforming with mixed results, and even returned to his original roots with a 2.5D joke with a 4 slapped on it. But in your heart, you know, it's not the Sonic you grew up with. And soon you begin to think, maybe he won't be returning. And then life has decided to be kind to the Sonic fandom. Hey everybody, my name is Nobody, and today I'm bringing you a review of hands down one of my games of 2017. Sonic Mania was originally announced during Sonic's 25th anniversary party and released in August. First for consoles and then for PCs two weeks later. Not for nothing, because I assume all the games are basically identical, minus one minor issue I do have with the PC version, and we'll be discussing that issue first and foremost. At the time of writing and recording this review, Sonic Mania for the PC has included an additional form of DRM in something called Denuvo. Denuvo is a DRM anti-tamper software found in several modern games to prevent piracy and can be found in several games in the past, only later to be patched out because it was alleged by consumers to not only shorten the lifespans of solid state drives, but according to Sid Alpha, who is an amazing YouTuber and one you should definitely be supporting, spoke of Denuvo causing massive game performance drops, and even though the company does claim Denuvo does not have read or write functions, I would be of the highest intellectual dishonesty if I did not disclose what I had heard. To be fair, I've never had a bad experience with DRM that wasn't Windows Live, but I do acknowledge it can be a massive problem in the industry, and Microsoft as a company is a prime example of what happens when your intrusive practices become a nuisance to the consumer. Now, with that said, the game has been patched to now run offline, and the developers did specify that they were surprised the Steam Store page didn't have their DRM listed as being required. Far be it for me to call them liars, but that seems like something a little too convenient. We just happen to leave out something players for years have made a giant stink about despising. I might just be a cynical piece of cyber shit, but even I can smell the manure on that shit farm. Eventually, given the trends with Denuvo, at some point I fully expect it to be removed or patched out within a year, just like it was with Doom, for if you want a recent example. So if you're not willing to purchase the game with Denuvo in it, I completely understand and don't question your decision. But in my experience, I wouldn't have known it was in my game if someone didn't tell me. And now that it can be played offline, your biggest concern would be the Denuvo itself, which again, I can understand given the history around the program. But now we've covered the boring stuff, let's get into why you're here. Sonic Mania is an absolute gem of a game. A diamond in the shit mound that Sega has been constructing over these past years. And something I, as a diehard Sonic fan, am absolutely enthralled with. But that, with that said, I am a higher grade Sonic Cancer than your usual rabble. I went to college, and as such, that gives me the right to instantly turn my nose up at anyone who didn't and proclaim that my way of thinking is right and your opinion on the Sonic series is absolutely trash. To be fair, it's not that different from the other diehard Sonic fans, I just have a degree. Attempt under my belt. But I'm kidding around. I will do my best, even admitting my bias to be as fair and honest about the game experience as I can. And while I will state that you should already purchase this game and explore it for yourself, you're here because you want to see the game before you buy it. So let's do that. I'll be splitting this into a spoiler free and then spoiler section. So if you want a spoiler free review experience, this is for you. Now, if you're familiar with the 2D Sonic formula, you're already familiar with the game. You run, you jump, you spin dash, and you try to keep your momentum going and your speed up throughout the two acts that comprise the level and conquer the boss at the end. Each stage is consistent of a midway boss between acts and an Eggman boss fight between zones after you've cleared the act. The boss fights are often short and while some are very creative, if you're a Sonic fan, most of your general rabble learn the pattern, hold onto the rings, and you won't have much trouble. I ran through most of them with relative ease and most being the key word and I had a blast playing it. But they do leave a lot to be desired in terms of innovation. You're not going to find much new here, but that doesn't mean it's bad. 
It just means you're familiar with the concepts and it probably won't be much of a challenge to you. The stages are all wonderful to look at and the stage backgrounds are filled with as much life as ever. From the scenic waterfalls and lakes to Green Hill Zone to the rough and tumble desert oasis of the Mirage Triloon to the sunset blue rooftops and skyscrapers of Studiopolis, this game is absolutely wonderful to look at. Everywhere you explore, you're always going to have something new to pull your eye away from Sonic and the action. And while I absolutely love the designs and the colors that permeate the atmosphere, of the zones, they can get distracting and you might lose your sense of direction pretty easily. But that's okay! The levels feel much larger than their original counterparts and the original levels for this game fit right in. Each zone you encounter feels like a welcome remix of an old classic or something new that makes you feel right at home. The controls feel tight and responsive with only one or two deaths feeling like I was robbed or cheated. And not even because it was the controls, but mostly my lack of knowledge and being pissed because I died. However, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that while the controls for the individual characters feel very responsive, the gimmick with Sonic being able to use AI tails like a tool and a cooperative partner was unresponsive and awkward to get going. Also requiring the person to press X while in the air often results in activating the new move in Sonic's arsenal, the drop dash which can result in sending you off in a direction you didn't want to be in, often resulting in a death you probably didn't deserve. But this is something you don't necessarily need to master or even use to beat the game. But if they bothered to include the mechanic of allowing Tails to be the tool for single player playthroughs, they could have just as easily bothered to flesh it out a little bit more. Why not tie it to a shoulder button? Frankly, the only buttons I was pressing on my PS3 controller were the directional pad arrows X, Circle, and Triangle. Square and the shoulder triggers were entirely untouched. Why not bind the Tails command to L1 or R1? I mean, granted, this is nitpicking in a sense, but I still feel like it's worth mentioning. The music in this game is absolutely wonderful. The remixes of old tunes feel fresh and interesting, and they keep your interest with a blend of old nostalgic tones and extended remixes of both the Act 1 and Act 2 tracks. The musical renditions in this game got a lot of love, and I can't say much more than that. There's not a single tune in this game that you won't at least have worm your way into your ear for an hour or so. Granted, most of them are remixes, but that doesn't make the original Sage compositions any less noteworthy. While I personally didn't find them the best the franchise has to offer, I'd be absolutely dishonest if I didn't say that they didn't add atmosphere to the levels and help keep the respawning and retrying from getting too dull. All in all, this section is going to be fairly short due to the spoiler-free nature. But if you think this game might be for you, if you find yourself craving some of that good old nostalgic 90s Sonic we all know and love, you're looking for a way to jump into the series, or you're just looking for something to kill some time and understand that the hype that the Sonic fandom must have for this game must mean something, you need to pick this up. It is hands down a must own and you'll be doing yourself a disservice by not owning it. At least check it out. And at a $20 price point, I'd argue it's a reasonable price for the amount of content you get in the game. Now, if you're not afraid of spoilers, we're going to be heading into that section of the review, so you've been warned, please vacate the video if you wish to have a fresh experience. Alright, everyone gone? Everyone who stuck around, make sure they want to stick around? Is that y'all got it all figured out? Okay, here we go, spoiler section. This game includes several different extra mods, including a debug mode, the ability to change Sonic's special active ability between the new drop dash, the Sonic 3 Insta Shield, or the Super Peelout from Sonic CD. Each gimmick is unlocked by completing the Blue Sphere special stages, and they don't just stop at addition moves for Sonic. You can also unlock Dr. Eggman's Mean Beam Machine, Blue Sphere the Minigame, and the Sound Test Mode. You can even unlock the hilariously dumb and Knuckles mode that lets you swap out your partner for Knuckles. So now you can have Sonic and Knuckles, Tails and Knuckles, but everyone's personal favorite is Knuckles and Knuckles. This game has a multitude of different things to keep you coming back for more and more hours. And while this game is a little short, it's still a blast to play through. I've already put 23 hours into the game and I'm still having fun with it. And that's across five or six playthroughs in total. Sonic Mania is a fine game. Everything I said above holds true. But in order to be truly critical of the game, I have to be willing to spoil it to really get my point across. And I'm not calling this game bad. If I wanted to give a number score to it, I'd give it 8 out of 10. Easy. And that's fair, I'd say, considering the following. Most of this is nitpicky, and to be fair, it all works relatively well, but I have to be honest. When I look at Sonic Mania, I don't see this game as a Sonic sequel of sorts, and I see this more as a Sonic patchwork project, and a very, very well done one at that. And let me explain what I mean by that. I love this game. I absolutely love this game, and everything it does, it does with passion and effort, 
and Christian Whitehead and his team should be absolutely commended for the work they put into this game. It's beyond, beyond, beyond amazing the amount of effort and passion and time and dedication that they have shown to making this beautiful experience come to life. But, if I'm being critical, this game didn't have much new to it in terms of innovation, and I wasn't kidding when I said that earlier. In fact, most of the levels in this game are comprised of sections and gimmicks in other Sonic games, brought together in an attempt to shoehorn as many we remember and love Sonic, how about you guys gimmicks as you can, which is fine when they all work, but there comes a point where you need to back off forcing everything in, because when you start relying on old groundwork, you start to uh, lose room to actually really grow in terms of what you could do with the series, when you're basically rehashing the same old stuff over and over again. At some point, we need to start asking the Sonic developers to start laying the groundwork for something new. And I fully believe that Christian Whitehead is capable of doing that. But first, you're probably wondering, what am I talking about? Well, everything from the stages to the hazards to the enemies are just reused assets from older Sonic games. And before you throw the torches and pitchforks at me, let me explain, let me explain. Stardust Speedway is as good a place to start as any. While the level itself is immensely fun to play, it's a little hard not to notice the swinging spike balls and lift chain hills from Marble Garden Zone littering the first act. Now, they fit, mostly, but it just feels a little forced in, and I would have liked to see something... I'm not sure, it's a speedway. Maybe have a dash pad that lights up as you rush through it, and the entire place is overgrown, so make Sonic rushing through the dash pad start to remove the grime and overgrowth, and give us something unique to Sonic Mania. Because short of the Axum Ranger Robos, we're lacking some new content. Four levels of unique content is interesting in and of itself, except most of the entire first act of Mirage Desert is just a remake, remake of Sky Chase Zone from Sonic 2, and it was fun there, but a big problem with Sonic 2 was the ability to spin dash right off the back of the plane. It made the spin dash basically useless for attacking enemies or evading attacks. That same gimmick is here too, in a level that doesn't really make sense to have it. It's not like we left on the tornado in the last zone, we're just suddenly on the tornado and suddenly Knuckles is with us and suddenly Sonic 2 reference because we desire to make you remember the good old days. But now we have the biggest example that to me makes the least sense. We're going to talk about Titanic Monarch Zone. And the entirety of that level is based around the gimmick from Sonic 3 Special Stage, where you're spinning orbs to launch yourself higher and higher. And the only question I have to ask is, why? Was that special stage so fun that you had to make a level around it? Really, all that made the level feel to me was kind of slow and awkward. Really hard to control, too. Studio Apple Zone is your typical Casino Night clone, but it's not terrible. The popcorn machines, the gamble pits, the lightning transport tubes, the movie reels, it was all a very nice level to play. And since most Sonic games have a gambling level, this is a welcome sight with, as far as I know, some original set pieces, but I digress. Oil Ocean's second act gimmick is retreading of Sandothla's Zone Act 2, with the only difference being the lack of ghosts. Lo and behold, it's actually still not fun. And I'm not picking on these just to be a dick, but for a point, because this game made me feel something entirely different as I finished my Sonic playthrough. This game made me realize that the biggest thing it stole was the concept of the entire game to begin with. Let me ask you something, and be honest. If I were to say to you, this plot synopsis, what's the first thing to come to your mind. Sonic and friends are up to their usual business, when suddenly some unexplained force enters their lives and suddenly teleports them through time to different places in their history, suddenly remade and given new life. It is revealed that this new force is under Eggman's control, and yeah, okay, you get my point. It's 2D Sonic Generations. Again, not that this is a bad thing, it's well done, and it's not a complete ripoff, you know. It doesn't have a modern classic Sonic gimmick to it, and it's not uncommon for Sonic games to remake zones. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that this concept isn't as fresh as you'd believe, and in fact, most of Sonic Mania is just an expertly patched together Frankie game running with a brilliant coat of paint and an engine that recreates the feeling of dashing across stages as fast as I can with a blue blur to a beautiful T. This game is absolutely worth your money and provides you with an experience that you will love from start to finish. So then why am I bringing this up? Because ladies and gentlemen, I want a sequel. I want Christian Whitehead and his team to make a Sonic Mania 2 on this engine. And I want them to expand on their ability to create original ideas and stages because this game shows us something that we all thought was gone from the world a long time ago. 
that someone can make a competent Sonic game and actually give it the passion and effort it deserves. And I have no doubt that some of the stage choices and decisions behind the scenes were influenced by Sega, but what I'd like to see is Christian Whitehead unchained and backed by Sega with the ability to create a real, true, original experience from start to finish. And I think we should all want that, because much like J.J. Abrams, and for the love of God, I know the new sequels have their problems, believe me, I know, but let me make the point, then hoist me over a mine shaft with snakes by my underwear later, much like J.J. Abrams, he's proven that he can make something like the originals, and now I want to see him make something of his own. Also, the final boss is a fucking pokey ball. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this review, and if you did, I'd appreciate your comments and feedback. With that said, my playthrough of this game will be coming soon, and if you want to check that out, I recommend sticking around. Until next time, my name is Nobody. I give this game a solid 8 out of 10. I definitely recommend you buy it. I'll link it down in the description, and thanks for checking it out. I'll catch you again next time.